Red Plume Soul song. Yeah, I'll do a million miles away. We wrote this. I wrote this song on a Germs gig. Me and Chris Fracken were upstairs at the Germs gig, and kids were diving off the balcony head first, hitting the floor, and then getting up and running back upstairs and doing it again. And uh, me and Chris wrote this lyric, and then we went to Barney's Beanery, and when we went down to this place where we finished the song there, and then we went down to this place and uh, woke this guy up, man, and he lived in one of those apartments that's around a swimming pool, you know. It was kind of a cheap version of a nice place. And, uh, and uh, so he lived there. And uh, when we write songs over at his house, you can tell if you had a good song, because like if it was, their kids would be out swimming in the pool, you know, and if they didn't think it was a good song, like they'd like be swimming and they would sing your song in a stupid voice. <laughs> but then when we played, wrote this song, like they were doing cannonballs and stuff, it seemed like it was going over pretty good. So this is called A Million Miles Away. And then we played, we, then we played it for the guy. There was another guy that was always in the jacuzzi there. And he turned out to be this dude that was the program director for K-Rock Radio. And so we, we got him to, you know, come on in, man. We're going to play our new record. And we were drinking a bunch of Corvoisier and all this kind of shit, man. Getting really out of it, man. And then we we're about to play him, like, this brand new Plimsolls record that hadn't even come out yet, man. And he's got his, you know, leather pants on and some shades. And he's, like, propped up on the table against the kitchen table with his feet up on the cowboy boots up on the table. And we had one of them little record players like they used to have in school. And we put the record on and put it on real loud, and he's like sitting there like wearing his shade, aviator shades, he's like really rocking and everything, man, and it's going over pretty good, and it goes through like the first verse, and he's like starting to sweat, man, he's you can tell he's really digging it, man, and it gets to the second part, and he's like really happening, he's kind of rocking back and forth in the chair, and then it gets to the guitar solo, and the guitar solo builds up and builds up and builds up, and he's like rocking harder and harder in the chair, it's like getting really exciting in the guitar solo, and you know, and the guitar's going up the neck playing this big lead, and like he just gets all worked up, and he just goes over backwards in the chair and hits his head on the floor, and he's just laying there on the floor, man, like, you know, He's kind of twitching and shit, man, but he's wearing those aviator shades, so you can't really tell if, he, if he's conscious or he he's having a fit or what he's doing. But yeah, and then we're like looking at each other like, should we take off the record and see if he's okay? But we're the telepathy communicating, we're going, should we take it off? He might not be all right. And then we go, but if we take it off now, like he, he won't get the full effect of the record, you know what I mean? And we better leave it on, you know what I mean? So we've let the record finish and they just lie in there and he goes, yeah. It's a fucking great record, man. <laughs> so they went on it real big at their radio station, man. Behind the scenes look at the record business, right there. Of course, he got up a little while later and he could get me over to the US. Of course, you'll have to hire me on as a consultant. I call it consultant. I'll buy you a slice of pizza. No, it's this guy, Larry. Larry Groves. He's gone now. True story, folks. That's how the record business works right there. So here's, the, here's how I wrote it on the, I just wrote it on the 12th Street guitar over at this guy Joey's house with Joey and Chris, and it goes like this.
try to hold on to the hands of the 